Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas for theCUBE's exclusive coverage. This is siliconangle.com and wikibon.org's exclusive coverage of Amazon Web Services reInvent. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of wikibon.org, uh, doing deep research in the cloud. Um, great work from Wikibon, storage, big data, now cloud. It's this next year you're going to see a lot of cloud research come out and a great cloud coverage continuing on SiliconANGLE. Again, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. Uh, we're excited to have uh, Aaron Peterson, SVP of Product Management for IO.com. IO Data Centers, I mean, what's the official company name? IO. IO, I, the best domain name in the business, <laughs> IO.com. I just, every time I see that domain name, I just fall out of my chair, I just love it. You, you um, think it's easy, but you do explain IO, and people are like, IO what? I owe. <laughs> you owe. <laughs> Who do you owe? <laughs> welcome, well, welcome to theCUBE. So, um, you own the roadmap. You guys have a unique offering. You guys are in, uh, in Arizona. You get an amazing data center, huge facility there. Awesome. But the world of the data center is changing. It's, you know, Amazon's saying, you know, it's going to go away now. You know, maybe for some businesses but the on-premise data center is never going away for the medium large enterprises, but it is changing. Software-defined data center is a term that's just now getting out there, it's being hyped up. I mean, it hasn't even reached hype yet. So I, I got to ask you, um, when you look at the roadmap, you're going from physical plant data center to the software model, what's on that roadmap? What's your vision for I.O.? So, well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, fired up to be here. Great day in Las Vegas, great show. Um, so uh, IO is a technology company that builds data centers. And uh, to be a little more specific, we build software-defined data centers. And to be even more specific, we build an integrated product across hardware and software. So from a data center standpoint, everything that's built from a data center standpoint is built with software optimization, software control, software in mind. Um, the founders uh, have a software background. Um, we, we build everything with the idea of monitoring and controlling via software. So the reason why we have our modular data centers um, that we have is because it allowed, gave us a standard form factor uh, that has allowed us to write software against that standard form factor and optimize it. So what's the, I mean, you guys have a big client uh, that's a public reference, Goldman Sachs. Um, I also do in your IPO as well, uh, but I don't want to go there, uh, given that you're going to have a, go public. But People are ordering data centers like servers. And that's a trend we're seeing that came out of the Facebook, and we're hearing Amazon's doing their own thing. So there's a lot of trends going on that you guys are kind of vectoring into. One is a data center, <laughs> give me a data center. I got a workload, I want a full data center around that. You also got to build your own. You have now DevOps, you know, the high IQ DevOps guys are doing their own data center, building their own gear. So you got open compute, Amazon's a black swan in my opinion, they're off the, off the charts in terms of, they, you know, they don't really play with open compute, but you know, generally people are going to start looking at open compute as an option, so these things are converging. Um, share with the folks uh, your view of that market, and, and how should they be looking at that data center? So we view the market as, uh, while we see, we see cloud and we see cloud taking off, we, we also know that there will always be the opportunity for a hybrid solution. And there's, gonna be, there's many reasons for the need for a hybrid solution, but data sovereignty is a big, big deal for, for companies out there. Where is the data? Who owns the data? Who has access to the data? I just read an article uh, yesterday on how to keep your data away from the NSA, and it was know your data sovereignty, know where it is, know who has it. Um, so really, every, so every enterprise out there we see is requiring a hybrid solution. Um, and we empower, through our data center technology, we empower the organizations to define a standard data center, implement that quickly, efficiently, software optimized, control it like they control other items in the stack, um, and allow them to do it in a standard fashion, in a fast fashion, in a cost effective fashion. So Aaron, you're responsible for, for strategy, you probably spent a lot of time thinking about the roadmap, you know, talking to customers, trying to understand requirements, and figuring out where to go in the future. So, where are you going in the future? What's, wh wh where do you want to take this thing? Um, just in terms of, you, you talk about software-defined data center. John and I talk about this all the time. Everybody talks about software-defined, but nobody's talking about the software-defined data center itself, the infrastructure. Um, so what are you sort of seeing from customers? What are they asking for in that infrastructure? 
So really where we see it going is that data is gonna be king. And right now we're seeing it with big data for applications, we're seeing it with big data with social media. We're approaching big data from a data center standpoint. We capture, uh, we, have over, name. Yeah, we have over 30 <laughs> billion rows of data regarding the operation of our data center using our standard products. And we have an applied intelligence group that is actually going through that data and determining the value, determining predictive modeling, determining where we can get value from that data and then offer that to our customers. But beyond that, um, the ability to see all the way through the stack from the data center infrastructure, so all the way, say, from the utility to the generator to the UPS to the server to the virtual machine in the server, being able to see all of that information in one feed is incredibly valuable. And let me give you a scenario um, where, where that value is. Today you can go out and procure enterprise software, say, let's take for example SAP. And you can choose for SAP to either run on the back end with database with either DB2 or Oracle. With the integrated stack, you can run test cases and look at the power consumption when you run your test cases with DB2 and when you run your test cases with Oracle. For the first time, you're able to actually see how efficient the code is from an operation standpoint. Because if you think about it, you're gonna make that decision to buy that package up front one time, but you're gonna run it for 10 years. How efficiently it runs, Needs to needs to play into the equation. So this is a, so one of the one of the challenges of, of of that type of data is that a lot a lot of times the, the CIO doesn't see the power bill, right? Um, so what are you seeing, and how are you? I mean, I presume that through a software defined interface, you're able to actually make that connection, and it's happening more and more. But nonetheless, it's like infrastructure guys over here, tech guys over there. Sometimes they talk. What are you seeing in terms of that trend, and are you able to bring those two constituencies together? So, uh, common challenge we face every day. The way I draw it, uh, if you put me in front of a whiteboard, I'll draw a river, and on one side of the river you have the IT guys, and on the other <laughs> side you have the facilities, <laughs> and I need to find that guy who's standing on the bridge across the river. Yeah, right. And uh, it's not always the easiest and thing to do. And the money's jump. floating down the river out the window <laughs> into the sea. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, so, so, but the point is, can, can, can a software-defined data center, as you described it, and providing visibility on those metrics, begin to create that bridge. It, it can, it can. And the question we like to ask, um, ask people, you know, they want to say, I want to save money on my data center. So the first question we ask is, do you know what you're spending on your data center? And typically they don't. Typically they can't go down and determine by application or by server what they're spending because they don't have the integrated stack, the data in an integrated fashion. So. Um, knowing what your expense is, knowing, tying, being able to tie it back, being able to charge back the appropriate expense is really where, where you need to start because if, if you don't measure something, you can't improve it. We were talking to James Hamilton recently and he was, uh, a couple of days ago, he was showing some pie charts and obviously compute is a big culprit, right, in terms of energy consumption, right? Heat density is a real problem in the data center. But he was saying networking increasingly is becoming problematic. Where are the, in the blame pie of energy consumption, where are you seeing the, the big challenges? It's compute. It's compute. The, uh, the network, while uh, partially because, um, because of the way the industry is going, there's more and more network traffic, uh, you need to be more connected. However, uh, really where, where the power is being consumed is in the compute. Yeah, so spinning disk is relatively minor, even though, that, and that's kind of going away too, right? I mean, yeah. So toward flash. Yep. But, uh, but so compute, so, so how, how do you think the industry, Aaron, is attacking and, and will attack that problem? Start so, by measuring, then what? So um, we're, seeing, we're seeing some interesting things from the industry, and interestingly mm -hmm. enough, it's being driven by the mobile market. So mm -hmm. I know there's been discussions of moving to ARM and the efficiencies yeah. that you can get from ARM, and I know there have been some claims that no matter how efficient ARM gets, you can't, uh, we'll never overrule x86. Um, but uh, clearly with the density, so being able to densify your data center and then the technologies that we see coming down the path, um, the combination of those two, uh, we're going to see significant consolidation in the data center for the amount of compute, for the amount of space and power required. I got to ask you about um, a trend that's happening that certainly Amazon's taking advantage of and that is obviously public cloud and they're winning big time. And you hear everyone here, oh, Amazon, who's going to compete against them? So in the public cloud, infrastructure as a service, okay, I give them that. They won, are winning, they continue to win. They are, they're light years ahead of anyone else. 
Um, IT is not the same. IT, it's just, it's cultural. It's apples and oranges, right? I mean, so, so the question is, does, the, does Amazon convert the enterprise, or does the enterprise convert to Amazon? So Dave and I talk about this all the time. Um, well, if you want to weigh in on that, be great. But also talk about what IT's like. What's the mindset of IT? Because you know, they, they're not going to just flip their data centers, rip and replace, forklift upgrades, all the things that they talk about. What does IT need to do to be successful to go to that next generation data center? Well, first off, IT guys are control freaks. And second of all, IT guys have the not invented here syndrome. And disclaimer, I am an IT guy, uh, computer science background. Um, it, it, it's legacy stuff, they have inherent baggage that they're de dealing with. It, Previous investments, software, applications. I, I think it's, it's going to need to be a generational thing. It, uh, it's going to be, you know, there were, there were managers and decision makers that did not let go of the mainframe. Um, and there, it's going to be the same way with uh, IT. However, I think as, uh, as the generation gets used to never storing a file on a hard drive on their machine, never having information you know, for themselves, but storing everything outside, once we see those people um, and they start proliferating in IT, I think we're going to see that CIT go that direction. And I think, you got, I, think, I think you're right on that. If you look at the Amazon success stories up there, Airbnb, Uber, I mean these are young, greenfield, clean sheet of paper deployments. These guys are you know, cutting their teeth in DevOps. But you go to a large enterprise that's been around for you know, you know, a century, and an IT, an IT decades, you know, they have a mainframe, they got client server, they got PC, LANs, internet networking, printers on the network, all this stuff. They're not compelled to just throw that away. So the question is, who will be the cloud there? I totally agree it's hybrid, so I'd 100% agree with you on that. But now, but they still get the scale problem. So you guys do a lot of work around kind of providing infrastructure at scale with the, with the uh, containers. What does that business look like? Because more and more people are, are dialing up more resources. What is that market like? I know you guys got a good backlog of business, but as you tweak that product, is it form factors, is it integration, is it software, all of the above? Really where we're seeing uh, a lot of interest and growth in that, in that area is, is on the edge. And people looking to reduce latency, where they know they, know they need to reduce latency, they know they need compute in a location, uh, they don't want to go through the entire exercise of finding a, facil finding a plot of land and constructing a data center, when they can buy one ready to go um, off the shelf, which is why our product line there is called IO Anywhere, because you can put it anywhere. And you guys integrate a lot of power and cooling. Talk about that because we heard from James Hamilton, obviously power and cooling is something that they've done that's changed it. What have you guys done to take advantage of some of those, of those costs? I mean, obviously server is one big cost. Then you got power facilities, I mean cooling, subsystems, and then actual power itself. Those are key areas. How do you so, get those costs in line? So our modules, um, we, uh, in our Phoenix facility, we operate standard data center area and then we actually operate in our modules as well. And we had a third party, um, actually our public utility, come in and do a study. And what they found was that our operating expense in the modular area was 40% lower than in the traditional area. And the reason being is in the modular area, we only cool what, we, what needs to be cooled. So if there's significant compute going on, which we talked about earlier, compute is the source of heat, then we cool that area. If there's not, you don't. We don't. You mean you're not chilling out the whole kitchen to refrigerate the sandwich? <laughs> you know, that yeah. so, so you're talking the, the, the PUE you know, metric on your pods is going to be much, much better than a, the standard data center, right? Can you, can you share some, and I know it varies based on how people configure it, but what are you seeing in the field? So in our, in our multi-tenant data center area, um, we're seeing about one four, um, but once again, that's because we run to, it is multi-tenant, so there's different types of compute going on in there. Um, we so also, if you made it more homogenous, you could get down to if, one three, yes, one two? exactly, and it's all software controlled, that's the key. You can change the temperature by, by essentially logging into our dashboard and making a change in a field. Yeah, and hopefully raise that temperature, right? Instead raise that temperature, <laughs> lower your costs. Yeah. And then uh, we also have a product, our Eco product, which takes advantage of free air cooling. So based upon the outside air conditions, it will actually use outside air for the cooling. Um, if the humidity is where it needs to be, it can use evaporative cooling. And if the conditions aren't 
good for either of those, it will actually use mechanical cooling. And I understand Phoenix is actually a great place for ambient air Believe it or not, it's, Phoenix, not, it's not humid. Yeah, believe it or not, yeah. Phoenix is a good candidate for that. Mm -hmm. Denver, Colorado is a great candidate for that. So you don't have to go to Iceland <laughs> to build a data center. No, you don't. <laughs> We're here with Aaron Peterson, the SVP of product management for io.com, io, .com, IO uh, data centers. Um, or io. Uh, or io. Prefer. Just io. <laughs> Just io. Um, I want you to put a bumper sticker on the car that's leaving uh, Vegas for reInvent. What is this show about? Share with the audience your bumper sticker tagline on that car on the freeway. What does it say about reInvent this year? What's the bumper sticker say? Reinvent significant growth, significant growth, plenty of opportunity, but they're not going to get everything. Okay, that's three bumper stickers. Okay, we've got, <laughs> we got three in one. It'd be a square, big, it goes on the window. Um, okay, we'll be right back with our next guest. Exclusive coverage with IO here uh, and Amazon Web Services reInvent. The cloud game is real, it's changing the economics. Hybrid cloud is right there on the doorstep. All this is all going on at the same time. It's a cloud collision here in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break.